Hi, today I'm going to discuss a very exciting topic, which is medical coding. It's actually not very exciting, so that was a lie, but it's something that we're really not exposed to very much in medical school or even potentially in residency, and it's something that I would argue is very important because medical coding is what allows you to get paid. So let's talk about what medical coding is. Medical coding is a way to translate information from the patient's medical record, so the EMR, or electronic medical record, to payers, right? These are the folks that are going to hopefully pay you, which can be either public payers, so the government-owned payers like Medicare and Medicaid, or private payers, which are any sort of private insurance company like Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, whoever are uh, the payers that you're contracted with, allowing the payers then to hopefully pay you. To pay you. So there are two different types of payments that hopefully come from the supporting coding, and those are the professional payments which go to the physician and the facility payments which go to whatever facility that procedure that you're billing for was performed in so frequently that's the hospital but it could be an outpatient clinic an outpatient surgery center it could be you know a, a freestanding imaging clinic anything like that Now where did we get the coding systems that we use today? So in 1996, something very exciting happened, and that's HIPAA. I'm trying to make this more exciting than it really is. I hope it's working. HIPAA is the Healthcare Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, and HIPAA designated two different coding systems, they already existed, to be used to transfer, transfer this information from the medical record to payers. The first system is the International Classification of Diseases, for which we are on the ninth revision. So you guys may have heard of ICD-9 codes. So that's all that means. It's the International Classification of Diseases Method of Coding, and we're on the ninth revision. We're at the dawn of the tenth revision, which is a whole talk in itself. The other coding system that HIPAA designated to be used for medical coding is the Healthcare Common Procedural Coding System or the HCPCS, it just rolls right off the tongue, and this is probably more widely known as CPT coding, or Common Procedural Terminology Coding. Okay, so now we see that we have the ICD-9 coding, or the ninth revision of the International Classifications of Disease coding system, and we have our Common Procedural terminology coding system. So what is the difference between these two coding systems? Well, ICD-9 has both diagnosis and procedural codes. So HIPAA designated that you had to have both a diagnosis code and a procedure code when submitting uh, medical coding for billing purposes. CPT codes, on the other hand, as you would guess by their name, common procedural terminology, is strictly a set of procedural codes. There are no diagnosis codes contained within the CPT family. So, just to make things super clear, and this is where it gets very exciting, so both hospitals and physicians use ICD-9 codes for diagnosis codes. 
because CPT does not have a coding system. However, the procedural codes differ between different settings. So while the physician code uses the diagnosis code from ICD-9, the procedural codes for ICD-9 are pretty much limited to use by the hospital inpatient setting. Whereas the procedural CPT codes are used in the outpatient setting and for physician billing. So things are always very easy and clear in healthcare, as you know, and this is an example of that. So again, ICD-9 codes have diagnosis coding and procedural coding, whereas CPT codes, like the name implies, common procedural terminology, strictly have procedural codes. So when it comes to which procedural code is used, the ICD-9 procedural codes are predominantly used by hospitals and the procedural codes from CPT coding are predominantly used in either the outpatient setting or for physician billing.